going to be talking about insects. Um, insects are a class within the arthropod phylum, and it is a absolutely humongous and different group. Um, again, if we're just talking about beetles alone, there are millions of beetle species, but um, we have a very, very varied group of animals in the insect group. And remember, this is a class, so our phylum is arthropods, and arachnids were a class, crustaceans are a class, and our final one is our insects. So, um, a few things that make an insect an insect, or the characteristics that would classify them, um, is one, this isn't really a classification characteristic, but most animals are insect. So three out of four animals um, is an insect, and really most of those are beetles. So remember, this is the majority of the animal kingdom in terms of number. An interesting thing is this is the first animal group to develop flight. So when we examine species from the fossil record, this is the first group we've observed that uh, actually has wings and can fly. Another first is, again, in the fossil record, they're the first group that was discovered that could actually use communication. So there's three main types we'll see our insects using. Those would be sonic, which is sound, visual, and chemical. So you want to write that down in your notebook, and then you want to write an example of each. So an example of a sonic form of communication might be a cricket um, calling its mate <coughs> with, uh, by moving its legs together and making that little sound. Um, another sonic example might be your cicadas. Uh, visual, a honeybee, how it dances. Honeybees will actually dance to uh, communicate, maybe to show where a group of flowers is. Um, another example of visual is like a lightning bug. They'll use light to, again, attract a mate. And then chemical is going to be primarily pheromones, and this is used a lot. So there is a fighting pheromone, um, there's a pheromone for mating, there are several different chemicals they'll use to communicate with each other. Um, if you've ever wondered why you like um, maybe were stung by a bee and then several other bees stung you, it's because when they sting, they give off a attack pheromone. That's what causes the group itself to attack. Another characteristic of our insects is the fact that they'll have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. So they'll have those three body regions. And this is really the only group that does that. Um, remember, both our crustaceans and our arachnids had a cephalothorax and an abdomen. They just had two parts. But our insects have a three-part body. Okay, characteristics a little farther. Um, they tend to have one pair of antenna. Um, not two like our, some of our crustaceans, but just one. They do have one pair of compound eyes. And remember, those are really good for detecting movement but not good at seeing an image. Um, and then they can have up to three simple eyes. So they actually can have a mixture of compound and simple eyes. And the simple eyes are really good at detecting light. The majority of them have one or two pairs of wings. Okay, but remember this isn't going to be all. So for example, you've probably seen an ant before that didn't have wings. Okay, but it's actually pretty difficult if you think about it to think of an insect that doesn't have wings. Okay, because most of them do. And then a wing is just an extension of the exoskeleton. So, like, for example, if you look at this butterfly's wing um, over here, uh, that is actually just the exoskeleton modified. Now, a lot of you have probably wondered before, like, why, when I touch a butterfly, do I get color all over my hands? It's actually because that wing is covered with little tiny scales. And so when you're getting, these all have color in them, and so when you're touching a butterfly's wing, um, you're getting these little scales on your hand. Um, but just remember again that that wing is part of their exoskeleton. Okay, so this is a good diagram here of your typical insect body type. And actually when you're creating your insect today, that uh, second part of our assignment, this is probably um, something that you will want to use as a reference. Okay, so remember they have three parts to their body, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. Notice that the wings and the legs only come out of that middle region, that thorax. 
So that is probably something that you'll want to include on your diagram as well. It's got our mouth parts labeled here. Um, and then it's really nice because it has more of how they're built. So like you'll find their guts and reproductive organs and their abdomen, mostly muscles in the thorax. And then the brain is kind of the center of the nervous system. So this was kind of a cool diagram of the insect body. And I like how they use color to show the uh, different regions. And then this is where we'll end. Um, insects have a little bit of a more complex nervous system. Like all of our arthropods, their nervous cord is ventral. Um, and then it ends in what you'll see either called a brain or like a cerebral ganglion. But there's nerves that will run away from this central uh, nerve cord. And that's how it feels things all over the body. Um, and then that cerebral ganglion or brain uh, is kind of that centered and um, brain or cerebral ganglion.